So if this is your first video watching from this series, I highly recommend that you watch the other ones too because through working with clients and counseling them through difficult periods of their lives, I have noticed that we all have certain patterns in our charts that cause us to go through similar or pretty much the same thing over and over and over again. And sometimes it is just through a helpful friend pointing out the pattern that we are able to kind of see like, oh shit, like, yeah, it, it, this is what is happening to me. And using astrology, we can see what planet, essentially it's usually a planet, it's usually a malefic planet, that is causing this pattern to be so prevalent in our lives. So in this series, we're going to be analyzing and talking about the negative and the positive components of each of the planets. Specifically, these are more strongly felt when we're talking about the outer planets, the transpersonal planets, but I will be doing this series for all of the planets because all of the planets have, as you hear us astrology people saying all the time, all the astrologers are always saying, it's positive and negative applications of the planet. So we're gonna be looking, today we're gonna be looking at my bestie, my bestie Neptune. We're gonna be talking about good Neptune and bad Neptune. First, we're going to talk about how you know if you're a Neptune dominant person. Then we're going to talk about some of the patterns that start to emerge in our lives if we are heavily Neptune so that you can identify yourself. So you can see like, hey, that is a pattern that I'm repeating in my life over and over again. And then we're going to talk about how we can go about fixing those patterns. What can we do to make the planet actually work for us? Because all of the planets can work for us. They, they're, they're not there to harm us. They're there really to help us be the most actualized version of ourselves. And I find that the more familiar we become with each of the planets, especially the planets that are dominant in our chart or in our life for whatever reason, the better chance we have at exhibiting the more positive and more empowered versions of the planet and therefore of ourselves. And usually what happens is that the person that most needs to watch this video is not even going to know that this is their problem. So if you are listening to this video and you're like, this reminds me of my friend Betty, can you please send it to your friend Betty? Because Betty is going to be having these problems and she's so clueless that she doesn't even realize that it's Neptune messing her up. So if you're that kind Virgo friend or whatever kind of friend you are, please send it to Betty. And I'm, I'm your gentle astrology bestie. Like I'm the gentle chaotic astrologer. So please. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be mean in this video. I'm not gonna be mean in a Neptune video. Who do you think I am? Do you think I'm a monster? I'm not. Okay, so first let's talk about what Neptune actually is. So Neptune is this innate human need to commune with the divine. It is this need that we have to transcend reality because for some reason, some of us just know that there's something beyond this world. We just, we just know it. When we have Neptune strong in our chart, we just know it, right? And other people explore Neptune through drugs, through psychedelics specifically, they are trying to leave this plane. And when you're a Neptune person, you are heavily, like you're tuned into that. And heavily Neptune people, a lot of them, they don't even need the drugs to do that. They just, we just know, we just know what's going on. Neptune is this overwhelming feeling of connection that a person can have with all of creation. All of the things in creation, you feel a very strong connection to them. Neptune is also an inner sense of transcendence. As I said, like we know that there's something beyond and we want to transcend this physical material reality and we want to go to where we belong, you know, to outer space. <laughs> and, and Neptune can also be that ecstatic state of bliss that we can reach when we leave the physical limitations of the body. That Those are all of the things that Neptune can be, right? So now looking at some life patterns for Neptune, we will often see people exhibiting high degrees of altruism, like doing good things for others, doing good in the world. All of that is very Neptune. But by that same token, we can also see patterns of codependency in relationships because isn't that like initially very altruistic to do something good for somebody else? Yes, it could become pathological and then you become a codependent. So we're gonna be talking about that in today's video. And you know, just in case it's not 
abundantly clear. I'm not a therapist or a psychologist in any sort of way. I'm just an astrologer and I'm talking to you about the astrological components that would contribute to a codependent relationship. Do we got that out of the way? We got that out of the way. Another very strong Neptune life pattern is feeling wronged. And if you're kind of, if the lights are starting to come on, it all stems from the same thing, right? If you're very altruistic, you do good for others, then it could become, as I said, pathological. You can become codependent. And then eventually you start feeling wrong. You start feeling wrong. If you notice that you, you feel wronged in a lot of relationships, that could also be a clue that there's some Neptune going on in your life. You have some Neptune life patterns if you feel wronged more often than not, or just often enough for you to be like, hey, you know, people are messing with me. And the last thing that I notice a lot in people with strong Neptune in their charts is that there's this sense, maybe they don't feel this way, but people from the outside could feel this way about them, that they don't get what they actually deserve. Like if you have a Neptune friend, you got a Neptune buddy, you look at them and you're just like, how did this happen to you? You're, you're a good person. Like, how are these things happening to you? How are you getting, how is this the result of your life when you're such a good person? Neptune, 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 Neptune. But first of all, let's talk about how do you know that you're a Neptunian person? So if you have Neptune in the first house, in the seventh house, in the fourth house, and maybe even the 10th house, the fourth is a very personal place, very hidden. It's people don't really get to see this about you. The 10th, it is more effortful. So to bring the Neptune out in the 10th house is a little, it's a struggle, it's harder. Everything in the 10th house is a struggle, but you can get there through effort and time. Everything in the 10th house takes time. The first house, this is just your, this is what you were born into. You are a Neptunian person. The closer that Neptune is to your ascendant, the more strongly you'll feel it. Neptune in the seventh house means that you experience Neptune through relationships. But the important thing to remember about the seventh house is that it's a mirror. This is, the seventh house is you when you're relating to others. It, the things in the seventh house we need to make an entire video about that, but people disown things into the seventh house. It doesn't mean that that's not who you are. That is a part of you, it's an opposition. It's something that you have to integrate into yourself, but that's an entirely different video. If you have Neptune there, you experience Neptune through relationships, you're a Neptunian because this is a theme that comes up in your relationship patterns over and over again. Also, if you are a Pisces, sun, moon, rising, uh, Venus, Mars, even uh, Mercury, then you can also feel strongly Neptunian because even though I use traditional rulership and I don't think Neptune rules Pisces, I do see that Neptune and Pisces, they resonate very strongly. And if you use the 12 letter alphabet, then Neptune equals Pisces. I don't necessarily use the 12 letter alphabet, but I do see a very strong resonance between those two symbols, those two energies. So yeah, if you have a lot of Pisces, then yeah, you're gonna be Neptunian. If you have a lot of planets in the 12th house, particularly personal planets, or maybe your chart rule in the 12th house, then you're gonna feel Neptunian. There's a difference, there's a subtle difference between Neptune, Pisces, and the 12th house. Yes, there is, but it's not enough for me to just tell you that you're not a Neptunian if you don't have Neptune here or there or the other. Another way that you could feel Neptune's strong influences and be like a temporary Neptunian is if Neptune is making an important interaction, like transiting Neptune is interacting with your chart in any of those ways that I just mentioned by transit. Then during that period of your life, you could go through some of these things we're gonna talk about in this video and you know it might behoove you. So people, Pisces people right now, because Neptune is in Pisces, or people who have uh, planets in Virgo, Sagittarius, or Gemini, because those are the squares and the opposition, right? So all of those people by transit right now might feel heavily Neptunian. So now for those of you who are intuitive, let's talk about how Neptune can feel. Because as I have said before, sometimes people learn astrology through studying and understanding and conceptualizing things, but other people pick up astrology just by intuition, just like how by the way things feel and they just have like an immediate understanding. So maybe if I tell you how Neptune feels, then you might be able to readily identify whether you're a Neptunian or not. So Neptune feels like overwhelming empathy. And I want to emphasize the word overwhelming. I mean, that sometimes when you have a strong Neptune connected to specifically your first house for the physical stuff, 
when you see something painful, you feel pain in your body when you have Neptune associated with your first house. I could also see it maybe with the moon because the moon is so responsive. The moon, it would be more... Uh, you very strongly empathize with people's emotions, but things with the first house is going to be the body. Like you see somebody with a cut, you're going to feel pain. You're literally going to feel pain in your body uh, when you have Neptune there because what Neptune does is it melts boundaries, right? So the boundary between you and the person that is feeling the pain, there's going to be no boundary there. So you're, you're going to feel it. The next thing you could feel when you're a Neptune person is pain. It's pain because you don't have boundaries between yourself and the outer world. So you tend towards uh, being injured by others because you don't have those protective barriers. And also it can be that empathetic, sympathetic pain that you feel because other people around you are in pain. Neptune also can feel like disillusionment. And this is because Neptune is associated with idealism. And when things don't function like the ideal, Neptune people could be very strongly disillusioned because they put things on a pedestal and then you know that fall is very very high and they can often be disillusioned by things. Another way we can feel Neptune is by feeling confused. We don't know what the hell is going on when we're strongly Neptunian and this is because Neptune people don't have a very strong sense of self and separation between them and others. And when you don't have this strong, resolute sense of who you are and what you want and what you're doing, then, you know, when you are interacting with other people, their ideas and the things that they're saying, they kind of melt into you to the point that you don't really know what was yours and what was theirs and you can get very confused and lost and befuddled. So that's why it's very important to surround yourself with people, in my opinion, if you're a Neptune person, surround yourself with people that have a very clear idea of what they want and where they're going. And that way you can just be like, oh, they're going in a, okay, I like the direction that person's going. Okay, I can come along with that person, right? Um, or your friends that have that sort of strong sense of self, all the fixed signs are really good for Neptune people in my opinion. Neptune also feels like overwhelming love. And I know that I keep using the word overwhelming, but it's because Neptune is overwhelming. It is so engulfing. Neptune feelings are so engulfing, right? So if you have this feeling of overwhelming love, that is Neptune. It is transcendent love. It is unconditional positive regard. All of those things feel like Neptune. Neptune also can give you this feeling of floating. Like you just feel like you're high and you're floating all the time or sometimes when you access the transcendent states that you can through Neptune. You could also have this feeling of unreality, like, like being um, depersonalized could be a very Neptune thing. And lastly, a positive thing, feeling of wonder, feeling of wonder at looking at something beautiful or just at life altogether, all of that is feeling like Neptune. The good Neptune. We're going to start with good Neptune first. So one good Neptune characteristic, as I've already mentioned, is unconditional positive regard. So because Neptune has this ability to see the best in somebody else, then even when somebody is doing something that is like not meeting the mark, you'll still be able to see the potential of that person. And you'll still be able to see them in a positive light. Neptune can be very all loving. That is when you are being, when you love somebody completely, you're being a good Neptune. When you show unconditional positive regard, you're being a good Neptune. However, as I keep saying, I want to put an asterisk here. All of these things can be taken to extremes and fall into the bad Neptune category, which we're going to go into next. Um, when you're being kind, when you're being forgiving, you are being a good Neptune because as I always say, who am I to forgive? Like, who are you? Who are who are we to forgive somebody else if we're all flawed, right? So that, that's, that's an entirely different rant, Denise. Don't go there. Another good Neptune quality is being Christ-like. And what do I mean by Christ-like? I don't mean like necessarily you're religious or you're Christian or you should be Christ-like. It's just that whenever I read about Christ in the Bible, that is like, that is a Neptune guy. That is a guy that is always kind and forgiving. And, and the, the perfect image that I have of being Christ-like and of that Neptune taken to the maximum expression is when Christ was... Um, crucified, I was gonna say euthanized, when he was crucified, 
And he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Having that compassion for the people that harmed him because he understood them. I was like, that is Christ-like. That is Neptune. Next good Neptune quality is being understanding. Because when you're a Neptune person, you know where everyone is coming from. And I was reminded of this when I said the previous, the Christ-like thing. It's because Jesus knew that the people who harmed him they didn't know what they were doing. So how could he fault them for doing that if they had no idea, right? So that is essentially one of the positive qualities of being Neptunian is that you're so understanding, that you see other people's pain and you see what they're coming from. So how could you fault them for doing something when you understand why they did it? And so there's a very strong understanding nature when you're a Neptunian person. However, as I said, I keep putting asterisks. All of these things can turn into a negative, which we're gonna talk about in the bad Neptune section. So stick around for that. Also, another positive uh, Neptune quality is having no boundaries. And this, I mean, I know that this sounds like a negative, but hear me out for a second. So I always talked about this with friends in the past. I think that, um, it is the boundaries that we create between ourselves and other people that cause us to harm others. Because if we have no boundaries, that means that we're all connected, right? And when you're a Neptune person, you're pretty much, you understand that. You understand that we're all connected. It's This is just an innate knowing that you have as a Neptune person. And when you know that we're all connected, then you will not harm somebody else because it's like harming yourself. However, yes, I'm aware some people do self-harm. But that's not what this video is about. So when you have no boundaries, then you treat other people as you'd want other people to treat you, which is a positive Neptune trait. You always think about how other people are going to feel based on how you treat them. So you modify yourself accordingly. You treat people with kindness, essentially, when you're exhibiting good Neptune behavior. So now let's talk about how all of these positive Neptune traits can turn into bad Neptune traits. Let's go, because this absolutely needs to be said. Okay, so the first one is that all these positive things can be weaponized against you, and let me tell you how. Neptune people, especially, especially I've noticed with Sun Neptune people, they have a very, because the sun radiates and it's where you want to be recognized. So if you want to be recognized as a good person, then my friend, like I'm going to tell you right now, people could very easily weaponize that against you because they can exploit your kindness and your um, forgiving nature. And so the moment that you try to correct um, somebody's transgression or the moment you want to create a boundary and be like, okay, you're no longer going to hurt me, they're going to take that knife and be like, oh yeah, but I, I thought you were like such a good person. I can't believe you're doing that right there. Don't let that happen to you. Do not let people weaponize your kindness against you. Do not let that happen to you. That really, really bothers me. You need to be comfortable and get more in touch with your dark side. Don't just lean on your light. Remember that we we're complex individuals. You are not just oh, this uh, perfect being of light. You have darkness inside of you. Everybody has darkness inside of them. And I want you, especially you as a Neptune person, if you're heavily Neptune and you lean too much on the Neptune, figure out where in your chart you have some shadow elements. Figure out where is your darkness. And I know, you know, the shadow of Neptune is having this very strong need to be a good person and to be seen as a good person, it really disturbs you in your son Neptune for somebody to think of you as a bad guy, as a bad girl, as a bad person, right? So don't let people weaponize that against you and don't let people exploit your kindness and your forgiving nature. That's the first bad one. The bad, uh, the next bad thing is that you can become self-deluded when you're a Neptune person. And this could also be linked to you wanting to be good and do good in the world to the point that you cannot you cannot see when you make a mistake, when you do something wrong, when you hurt somebody, you can't see it because this image that you have created of yourself is that you're a good person. So how is how can a good person do something 
bad or how can a good person do something that is harmful and so it, it could kind of shatter your sense of self and I don't want that to happen to you. Don't put yourself on a pedestal. Remember that you're a person. This is what I'm constantly telling my Neptune people. When you're being so good to the point that you're leaving yourself empty and you're harming yourself for the sake of somebody else, then this is where I always have to remind you that you're a person too. And you have to like personify yourself. And I mean this literally because sometimes Neptune people can become so depersonalized that they for they turn into spirits. I always say this, like, are you a spirit right now or are you a person? I need you to be embodied. I need you to be in your body and be a person. And another way that I remind people that they're a person is you're your mama's baby. Somebody had you. You were somebody's little baby. You gonna disrespect your mama like that? Don't disrespect your mama like that. Take care of yourself. Treasure yourself. If somebody is harming you and you're putting yourself in a situation where somebody's taking advantage of you, you're disrespecting your mama. Or if your mom is a jerk and you don't want to think about her, what about God? Do you believe in God? Then you're disrespecting this little baby that God made and you're disrespecting it by letting somebody else shit all over you. So don't let that happen to you. Another way that Neptune people can become self-deluded is because they want to believe the best in other people. They want to believe that other people have the best intentions and that the best outcome is going to happen. So they can become very self-deluded. Another thing that could happen is that Neptune people can become very gullible or can be very gull gullible because as I said, like they want the best outcome to happen. So they'll believe the best story that they hear from somebody else. And you have to combat that. We're going to talk about how, remember with all of these negative things in the next section, we're going to talk about how we can combat these things, how we can make our Neptune work for us. Because remember, even though Neptune is really difficult, I'm the first person to tell you that Neptune to me is a malefic. Neptune is not magic and unicorns and stars. Like, no, to me, Neptune is a malefic planet because it could have such a negative impact on people's lives. However, I think that right now, like I feel like I'm a, I feel like a politician right now. I'm gonna tell you my speech. I wanna work on Neptune awareness in all of our lives. I want all of us to be aware of our Neptunes so that like Neptune doesn't continue fucking us up because Neptune can absolutely ruin your life and I don't want that to happen to you. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want that to happen to anyone. And how can I like contribute positively positively to that? I could talk about Neptune in the astrology community, which is I'm trying which is what I'm trying to do right now. So thank you for coming to my TED talk. Another bad Neptune trait is being unable to see the faults in yourself and in other people. And so you can't see that you've done something wrong. You cannot accept it because you really need to see yourself as a good person. Conversely, if it's maybe in the sinistry that you have Neptune or maybe your Neptune is in the seventh house, the person that you're dating, the person that you love, you have to see them as this perfectly good person. And so you'll just like, fudge up, you'll fog up all of their mistakes anytime that they've harmed you, anytime in the past that they've done something wrong that you should maybe dig into or maybe be a little bit concerned about, you're not gonna be concerned about it because they're not like that anymore or you're not even gonna notice, you're not gonna ask. You're gonna delude yourself. You're gonna choose to not look into those things. That is another negative Neptune trait that you could take on. Another bad Neptune trait is, let me just say it, good intentions. Good intentions are a terrible Neptune trait. And let me tell you why. Remember that, that whole quote? I probably should make an entire video about this, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Think about what that actually means. I mean, I guess it could mean different things to different people, but whenever I hear that, I'm just like, wow. It means that you wanted to do good. You intended to, good, to do good, but what did you actually do? Sometimes when you're a Neptune person, you think that the intentions are enough. And sometimes I'll hear people be like, oh yeah, but that's not what I meant to do. Like my heart was in the right place, but yeah, but you know, sometimes your heart is always in the wrong place, but your actions are in a, the bad place. So like you really have to ask yourself, are my intentions lining up with what materializes in the world? And I don't mean all the time. We all make mistakes, remember. This is not to trap you into having to be this perfect person because nobody's perfect, starting with me. And so we don't have to be perfect. However, we can strive to do good and to have our intentions match up with what we end up doing. And that is what we 
should remind ourselves periodically to do, especially if we see that our life is getting too chaotic and things are getting out of hand, then we really have to sit back and be just like, am I, am I paving the road to hell with good intentions right now? That's a, that's a useful question when you're a Neptune person, specifically Mars Neptune, because that is your actions in the world. Lastly, these two are linked together because they're similar. Self-victimization, putting yourself in a situation where somebody else is harming you and you just denying yourself, like you're not a person. And we already talked about this previously, but making yourself so small that your needs don't matter so that somebody else could be happy, could be healthy, could be good. This is where the codependence comes in. This is not good. I have to remind you constantly that you are a person, you're somebody's baby, at least be your own baby, take care of yourself. And this is like a constant reminder that you have to have when you're a Neptune person, when you're in a codependent relationship, when you are in any sort of situation where somebody is victimizing you, you have to understand that you are participating in it. You're participating in it. What do therapists always say? This is the first thing a therapist tells you. There's something that you're getting out of that relationship. And that's not what this video is about. That's an entirely different thing. But I'm telling you that, are you a baby? Are you a tree? You're not a baby or a tree. You can get up and leave. You can get up and move. You can change your phone number. You can throw your phone, you can throw your phone in the lake and get a new cricket phone, <laughs> whatever cheap phone you want. But you don't have to stay in a bad situation. If you are in a bad situation, I need you to please Take responsibility and know that you're putting yourself in that situation. And you know why I feel so comfortable saying that to you right now? Because I've done that. I've put myself in situations and I'm just like, oh my God, this person's being so mean to me. Until somebody else was like, Denise, this is very shocking behavior from you. I can't believe you're letting yourself get treated like that. And I was like, oh, you know what? You're right. And then I just switched up like this. I want you to switch up like this, defend yourself. And the best defense that you have is to just eject yourself from that situation. Just remove yourself from the situation. You don't gotta explain nothing. You just gotta leave. Okay, so now moving into how do we deal with this Neptune fog and confusion and altruism? How do we deal with it? How do we make it work in our lives? How do we make it work for us and not against us? So the first thing, which I've already sprinkled throughout this video because it's my most important thing that I always say, this it's my ultimate Neptune TED talk. You need to remember that you are a person. You And how do you do that? You need to be in your freaking body. When you're a Neptune person, you could float out to outer space and you could veg out out there. You could just be out there in delusional land and you just completely depersonalize. And I need you to be in your body. And how do you be in your body? Look at Virgo. What does Virgo do? Virgo makes their little dinner. They have their little routine. They have their little um, bathing rituals. They wash their little faces. They do their little, ver they go to work. That is your model of what you need to do in order to incorporate yourself into yourself because you tend to float out into outer space and I need you to be in your body. So you need to take care of your body every single day, whatever that means to you. If if you like exercise, exercise. Exercise is wonderful. Some people don't like it. Maybe you like to dance. Dance is exercise. Maybe for you, it'll be you love taking a bath. Take a bath every day. Maybe not every day. Maybe you don't got that kind of time. But if you're going through a a really rough Neptune period where you're living in la la land, you're suffering really chaotic emotional situations because of your relationships or you're freaking depressed or whatever, you're in a bad Neptune spot right now, you need to take more baths. You need to take more baths, you need to take more showers, you need to put on your makeup, make yourself look like a person, like the person that you are and Little by little, you start to feel more like a person. This vegging out on the couch and just like floating into outer space over and over again for too long, this is not like coming from a judgment place because I've been there. This is coming from a I've been there and that's not gonna help you place, right? So you need to cut it off eventually, right? So I need you to be in your body. The next thing you need to do, which again, I already talked about because it's my other Neptune speech, you need to ask yourself, how am I contributing to my suffering? Let's just make it super simple. Let's just say you're a little girl and you're in high school and there's this, one of your friends is just freaking mean to you. Like she's, she's just mean to you. And you give her a lot of chances and she just, she just says mean things to you. 
And I gotta ask you, don't you have other friends? No, maybe you don't have other friends. Can you prefer to be alone rather than have yourself in that situation where that person is constantly hurting you? Because at some point, it's like if somebody was throwing a rock at you. At some point, if you don't move out of the way, it's on you, right? So you need to take responsibility for your life and for how you are contributing to your suffering, especially when you're talking about relationships. And let's be for real right now, when you're a Neptune person, sometimes you can get involved with people who are um, who have some type of uh, psychological issues or mental issues or people who are really suffering and so they're lashing out a lot and you could be their person, you could be their little support animal. Well, I'm here to tell you that when you put yourself in a situation like that, I'm not saying you shouldn't because everybody deserves love. I absolutely believe that. And that's an entirely different rant. I have so many rants. But I do think that when it starts to take away from you and you start going in the tank, in, in the hole, like there's no point. There's no point because it ends up being a net zero. If, if this person is just absolutely struggling, right? They're at zero in their life. Their happiness quotient right now is zero and you're at a 10, and you're helping them out, but they're not getting any, any better, and they're just pulling you down, and you go from 10, 9, 8, 7, and now you're at zero? Maybe like, now you two are at zero. So what is the purpose of this exchange for you two to be at I'm I'm a utilitarian. I am great is good for the greatest number. So if this relationship is not making you happier, then you it, it's not making this person happier and it's not making you happier it's just sucking you dry or even worse like imagine this person's going to 10 and you're at zero that's also very unfair so you need to like this per you need to actually see this person improving because if they're not improving sometimes by removing ourselves from the situation that person will get a chance to do what they were supposed to do all along which was heal themselves like it's a personal, it's a personal journey. Healing is a personal journey. We're never going to do it through somebody else. Yes, somebody else's positive influence can help, but ultimately it's an internal thing that we all have to do. Some useful questions to ask ourselves when we're just like, how am I contributing to my suffering? Some of the questions are, have you forgiven too many times? Have you forgiven too many people for the same type of thing? Have you forgiven the same person over and over again for the same type of behavior? That's one question. Are you not seeing external reality? Because sometimes people could give us little stories and we just believe them. But the stories that they tell us are not lining up with what's going on in, in their life, in our life. So we have to do what I call reality checks. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Another question is, am I not learning from the past? Am I, again, this is why I made all these videos. Am I going through a situation over and over and over again in a similar way, but I'm not learning? I'm not, what was the lesson, right? So this is another useful thing to ask ourselves. Sometimes one useful thing that we could do when we're in, a, especially in relationships, we need to take notes literally. And I know I, anytime I talk about Neptune and Pisces, I talk about uh, Virgo. Virgo is the note taker, right? Virgo notices every single detail. I need you to become a Virgo. So if you're in a relationship with somebody and they said to you, um, you know what? Like, I want us to move in together. Like, you're, let's just say you were going to break up and you, you really wanted to move in with this person, but they just kept making up excuses or they would just like never agree to it. And, but they wouldn't break up with you, but they would never agree to move in. And you are just kind of sick of it. And then they tell you, no, 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 we are going to move in. We're going to move in by April of 2024. And it's like March and you guys haven't even looked for a place. Sometimes people who are heavily Neptune they'll forget, like they'll forget the promises that people told them because they don't want to end the relationship. So what I need you to do is start taking notes of what the person says they're going to do and see, just like put it in your calendar. This doesn't have to be like freaking CIA operative or FBI investigator, like with your bulletin board. No, not like that. It's not a Rico case, but what you can do is just make a little note in your calendar just so that you could see as time is passing, are things lining up with what this person said they were going to do? That is really a very useful tool to use to see if it's lining up, if what they're saying they're going to do is lining up with reality. And I call that like the third, the third thing is you need to do reality checks. So reality checks are when you see 
whether the direction that you're taking with this person is going to check out in real life. And what I mean by that is sometimes you put yourself in um, situations romantically where what you want and what you envision as a couple does not really materialize into something real. And some people have no issue with that. Some people have an online relationship and it'll always be that way and you're okay with that. But sometimes in the couple, only one of them is okay with it and the other one is not. So if you're the one that's not okay with that, I need you to know that. I need you to know that you're not okay with it and I need you to get out of the situation if that is not good for you and it's not what you want, right? But if you're both okay with that, if all you want is like to be in love in outer space together, girl, do you. Be in love in outer space. Be delusional. I don't care. Who am I to judge? I'm not going to yuck your yum. I don't care. But if you're this person who's unhappy because this person is in La La Land and you are very much like in Texas, like I need to help you. I need to help you. Either that person's going to move from La La Land to Texas or you're just going to you know, launch them into space where they belong and you're going to meet a cowboy, right? Whatever it is that you need to do in order to be happy. Because that's the, that's what we're trying to do with these videos. Help you to have more fulfillment in your life. Or another useful thing you can do is just imagine that you're saying this story, like your love story with this person, your plans with this person. If they're not even making plans with you, girl, like you need help. But let's just say you are, you're, you know, things are moving in the right direction or so you think. So imagine saying your plans and where you're moving in the right direction, saying all of that to your most logical friend or like you're telling me, like watch my Capricorn <laughs> video and try to imagine what I would say. Your girl, like I am very strict about the things that I believe and the things that I believe are evidence, like evidence-based things are the things that I believe in. So you need to get really familiar as a Neptune person be very familiar with evidence, become very familiar with that because that's what you need to incorporate into your life as a Neptune person. All of the Virgo qualities of discernment and discrimination, that is what Virgo does best. They're looking for errors, they're looking for truth and facts, right? So that's what you need to incorporate into your life. So the whole point of this is not to steal your magic. I don't wanna steal your magic. I don't want you to live in this plain, boring, mundane life experience. I just want you to either make your magic, like these magical dreams that you have, I want you to make them real. I want you to feel better so that you can make those magical ideas that you have real. Or conversely, maybe I just want you to bring more magic into your everyday life, right? So either of those two things are good. Like maybe you don't have this big magical plan that you need to bring into reality. Maybe you just want your everyday life to be a little bit more magical because you're a freaking Neptune and you deserve that. So let me give you very briefly some helpful Neptune targets, some good Neptune targets. So one really good one is, I believe the name of these Sufi, I don't know if they're monks, but do you know what a whirling dervish is? It is this physical meditation that people do and where they spin and somehow spinning alters your mind state have you ever tried spinning and you get like woozy? That is communing with Neptune. You are kind of leaving your body in a way and um, accessing other levels of consciousness. You could do it like that. You can do it through meditation. You could do it through breathing exercises. All of those ways are ways of bringing Neptune into your life without you having to escape reality. This, this is like physically bringing it into your life. Another good Neptune example or target would be the ascetic monks. Like think about these monks, these guys, they don't eat a lot. They can, sometimes they can be vegan or they can eat really simple meals like just rice or whatever it is that is donated to them. I've read about that in the past. And I've also read about some concept known, I don't know if I could even say this word on YouTube, but um, it's called is it spiritual anorexia or religious anorexia? Essentially, the idea is that through consuming fewer calories, you are closer to the divine in the sense that like, your body is physically weak, right? And so if, you're, if your body is weak, then you're not in your body. You're not grounded. And so you're lighter and you are 
closer to God in that way. You are closer to another realm rather than the physical realm. So that's an other way through fasting or anything like that. And this is, I don't know if this is a thing that you guys have heard of, but my mom taught me how to read cards and she always had the habit of if she had to do, if she had to read cards or anything like that, like tarot, my mom reads Spanish cards, but I read tarot cards. Um, she always did it in the morning when she had fasted and I don't know why she never explained this to me She's not a big explainer. She just kind of shows me what to do and I don't know if you've ever tried this if you've ever done anything in a fasted state But what it does is it makes you very very clear But you feel very light and that is another way that you can access healthy Neptune so it's kind of like you're, you're naturally inspired when you do something like that. So obviously if you have health issues, don't be fasting. If you have blood sugar issues, if you're a kid, don't be fasting, ask your parents. Don't say the internet lady told me to fast and that anorexia is spiritual. I'm sorry, this is very controversial. I'm a controversial queen. And if you watch this video and you can think of a friend that loves that delusional stuff that's going on on TikTok, the Delulu thing, I wanna make an entire video on that. But if you have a friend that could really use this, please send it to them because I do find that people don't real. whenever I get a client and I see the freaking Neptune and I'm just like, why didn't you tell me about this Neptune? It's because they don't know, right? You don't know what you don't know when you have the Neptune situation going on. So if you have a Neptune friend that could really use this video, please send it to them. And I'm gonna be making my Neptune PSA very soon to as like a follow-up to this one because I just have so much to say about it. And I love you very much. I'll see you in the next video.